Hello, I'm Dr. James Bogash, expert in health and longevity and creator of Bogash Life and Balance. And I haven't put out a video in a while, but it's not like I haven't been reading, gosh, a, a lot on COVID in the research, not the media. That's the important thing to pay attention to. And we're going to talk a little bit about this today. So I'm going to cover a couple different topics. First of all, we're going to talk about the concept of breakthrough vaccination. Um, we're going to definitely talk about super spreaders because there's some interesting information on super spreaders. Um, deaths, you know, talking a little bit about our world, our world and data, looking at the variants, especially the Delta variant. And um, so what we had thought prior to December 2020 about variants and vaccinations. So we'll start with the whole concept of, of breakthrough. And, and so part of the reason I haven't posted in a while is because it's so frustrating to look at the titles of articles. And they don't, they, it's very rarely that they actually add any value. Um, they add hype and concern and stress, but they don't add value. So what you see is that, especially the data coming out of, of Israel, and keep in mind Israel probably has some of the best data on, on COVID because a good chunk of their population is under a single health system. And they, so they can track data very easily and they are a heavily vaccinated um, country. So um, the, the uh, concern has been that the increase in breakthroughs, or whatever you want to call it, vaccine failure, breakthrough, and nobody discusses that in the media, but they say, oh, well, we expected some of that. And, you know, like it's not 100% effective, and, and we know that, and so there are always some chances, but they're kind of dodging around the concept is just how many breakthrough infections are occurring. And um, so where does this stem from? And that is because an important concept with vaccination is that we are injecting it directly into the muscle or the bloodstream. That is not the route of infection in, the, in, in nature. It never, it almost never is other than potentially tetanus. So we are affecting that. And so when you look at vaccination, it doesn't, um, so we look at both the inside immune system and then the mucosal immune system. And we talk about things like tissue resident memory B cells or BRMs. So when we get exposed to COVID and we get ill with COVID, then the mucosa, the lining of our respiratory tract, our mouth, our GI tract, has a different set of immune cells and a different memory cells. So that when you get exposed to it again, the those tissues are right there on the front line possibly stopping it from ever getting in again and we'll talk a little bit of in um, about previous inf uh, actually i'm going to do a separate just post on previous infections because it's still um holding out true that we have seen this this idea that vaccination is stronger than we're, we're using mother nature but somehow mother nature and the way our immune system is designed to work is not superior to vaccines and so that deserves its own um, article so the thing to understand is that this mucosal immunity is not developed by vaccination so it doesn't necessarily do a good job of stopping things from getting in and setting up a, a upper respiratory tract infection it's something that we don't talk about we think that it's an all or nothing game and it's not we know that people who have been vaccinated still it, it will protect once the virus gets in and so certainly um, hospitalizations and deaths those numbers have been better with vaccination but as far as cases um, we might not see much of a difference because that mucosal immunity isn't set up like it is with somebody who got COVID. Something to very much uh, to be important. And so this boils down to the whole issue of transmission. And oh my God, I've been pulling my hair out over the idea that get vaccinated and so we can stop the transmission. Little bit, God, just read the freaking research 
and understand that we have no idea if vaccines affect transmission. They might, but certainly not enough to be telling the world that the way to stop this and the way to stop transmission is by getting a vaccine. We don't know. The, the Moderna and the Pfizer trials were not designed to assess transmission. When we've kind of taken a look at some of those, it may stop transmission by about 50%. So um, we just don't know yet. And that data won't be available for another year or so. So stop telling people to get vaccinated to stop transmission because we don't know if that works that way. And the idea that the mucosal, um, the mucosal system is not set up to fight off a virus when given a vaccine adds weight to that idea that we're just not sure yet. So it may turn out that it, it does stop transmission, but I would get frustrated with people waving their flag of how to stop transmission when we just don't know yet. So um, speaking of transmission, we've all heard the concept of super spreaders. Um, and we know this, that there are some people at, it's something like 20% of the population is responsible for 80% of the transmission. What's interesting is there's all of this shaming and talking about not wearing a mask and, and you're spreading it and, and there has, there's been lots of social shaming about this. But the study in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences looked at the BMI and routes of uh, how much virus was aerosolized. And it turns out that higher BMI, those people are more likely to be associated with higher viral loads, higher expression of aerosol particles. So, you know, it, it's always funny that people in glass houses should not be throwing stones, but understand when we talk about super spreaders, the, somebody who's lean is a lot less likely to expel large amounts of aerosoled virus than somebody who has a heavier BMI. So keep that in mind for those people who like to throw stones. Um, we certainly have to talk about, uh, if you've got an hour to play around, our world in data is where a lot of people pull the data for COVID. And it's really not that exciting. Like the numbers where we're at are not that exciting. And, and if you listen to the news every day, you will certainly think that it's all doom and gloom and we're pretty much going to die. But we were going to die after Easter. We were going to die after Memorial Day. We were going to die after the 4th of July. We, everything else was going to open up. We, we should have been dead already. Uh, it should just be the cockroaches running around. But... Obviously, that hasn't happened. Uh, the concern now as well, you know, all of that interaction didn't spread, but now we have the Delta variant. And it is clear that the Delta variant is definitely more transmissible, but most of the data is suggesting that it is less virulent, which makes sense. That's the direction a virus wants to tend. They don't want to kill off their host because it won't be able to transmit. So um, if you look at the deaths, because... Just shut your mind to cases. That's all you hear in the news is cases, 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 cases. And yet the death rate, the number of people who have passed from COVID, um, and we can always say that every death is awful, but the reality is like we're human beings, like people die. Um, cardiovascular disease has gone on, like nobody's concerned about that, but more people have always died from cardiovascular disease, cancer. Um, so we now have a baseline that hasn't budged for months here in the United States. And if you look at our world in data, you will see that those trends everywhere across the globe, except for India, has because India had a later spike, but all of the trends are a downward trend. We now see a slight uptick, but that number is pretty small. So when you hear 24% increases, well, you know, if you only had five people that died and one person or two more people died, like that's a pretty big increase, but it's not a scary number. Um, and you know, the reality is this has been saying this from the beginning, this virus is going to become endemic and we will, um, you know, those numbers will taper out over time, 
But ultimately, there will be people that we will lose every year as a result of COVID, just like we do from influenza. Lord knows it happens with cardiovascular disease, which is almost entirely preventable, but somehow dying from cardiovascular disease is not the same as dying from COVID. I, nobody can really give me a good explanation why that death is different than this death. Well, we seem to think that, well, it's a virus, it's out of our control. Not true. Uh, you'll find that the risk factors are the same for both. It just, it, that eludes me as to why we're not panicked about heart disease, but we are panicked about COVID. Um, and, and the other thing, the other, you know, even though our cases are going up, this is not the same viral scenario we were dealing with early in the pandemic. Medicine is doing a better job managing this. And so looking at death rates, which again are heavily tied to comorbidities, um, even now, those death rates are, the, the, you can talk about infection, for matal, infection fa fatality rate or case fatality rate. Remember that case fatality rate is the number of people who are diagnosed, so that number is always scarier. But the case fatality rate has dramatically dropped from the beginning of where we were at. So um, interesting enough, if you, if you play around in our world and data, you can look at things like New Zealand, which we've held up as this amazing country, but they're an island. They don't count, they lock themselves down. And uh, New Zealand has a health problem much like the United States does, but they were able to lock down their borders. One of the things I found interesting is you can look at excess mortality on our world and data, and you'll see that um, when, the, when you hear New Zealand, you will see that there was no excess mortality. They have basically a baseline. What's interesting is early on in the pandemic, those numbers, excess mortality dropped. In other words, less people were dying. You now look at that same set of six months and those numbers are up, which is why it's now zero. But why are those numbers up? It's not COVID, but there's something going on that's killing people off more now in New Zealand. If that trend continues, New Zealand will have lost um, their excess mortality would have joined everybody else's. Again, you have to look at the numbers. You can't look at the panicked. Um, everybody's different. I'm a mile high person. If we're going to make decisions for everybody's lifestyle and everybody's decisions, then we need to make mile high decisions. And you can't look at a panicked hospital in Missouri or Mississippi um, and make decisions based on that because it's a unique scenario. So, um, the last thing I'll talk about so is the vaccination and variants. And everybody keeps saying, you need to get vaccinated to stop the variants. And nobody seems to entertain the idea that the vaccines may be contributing to the variants. Prior to December 2020, it was a very well accepted phenomena that heavy that vaccination can produce variants. Like, we knew that. Now all of a sudden, 2020 hits, we have our vaccination for COVID, and now that research is crap. It doesn't mean anything. Nobody even knows that it exists. If you're gonna search for it, you have to search and rule out dates from 2020 on. But there is a very, uh, there's a very realistic chance that heavy vaccination is leading to variants. And those variants will now have escaped vaccination. So people who have been vaccinated now get um, so like that variant is going to spread more because it's more efficient at what it's doing. It has all to do with the spike protein. Um, so like, I just, again, it's one of those frustrating things that um, we, like, you don't even know what to say given where all the data and all the information has been out because nobody seems to understand the real data. And I'm not saying that I do, but it's available. It's one of the reasons that I share it in every video, every post I do, so that you can look for yourself and make decisions based on what you see on what's happening in this world and, and be a little less stressed. The bottom line, it always ends up... So <laughs> I've said that the beginning of vaccine... like when. We should have been talking about lifestyle changes at the beginning of this because we know how much the comorbidities play a role. We managed to dodge that bullet and then the vaccines came out and people were like, whew, I thought I was going to have to go to the gym and start eating better, but now we have the vaccines. So now we could avoid the lifestyle discussion for 
six months, and now that the variants are starting to come back, we're like, people are going to start sweating it out that um, maybe they need to start exercising and getting some sunlight and some better dietary choices, but don't worry, because we'll just get a third dose and a fourth and a fifth, and that will be your life, instead of taking better care of yourself. Uh, so I think I'll leave that at this from here. As always, I will post the link to the, the variety of things that we talked about in here, and uh, make sure you like this video, share it with somebody who you think is stressed out over the media, and subscribe to the channel.